Hello guys, today let's talk about validation messages in Laravel and generally on the web. Because I see quite often developers leave validation messages default from framework, which is mostly okay in most cases, but sometimes the users of the websites or projects struggle to understand what that message actually means, where is that placed, how to fix that, or who to talk to if something is really unclear. And we can do a lot of UX changes, user experience changes, both in Laravel and outside of it, to make messages like this one more clear and usable and actionable. And I will do it based on two frameworks, two starter kits, Laravel Breeze based on Tailwind and Laravel UI based on Bootstrap. An interesting thing that those two starter kits are placing errors in different ways. So Laravel UI shows the errors below the field and then highlight the error field. And Laravel Breeze just shows the messages before above the form. But let's dive deeper what we can improve. First thing before we dive into Laravel stuff, let's talk about HTML. And you're probably thinking, what? HTML? We know HTML. But do you? Do you use all the possible properties and attributes of your input fields to limit the validation errors? So first, do you use the types of the inputs as they should be? So if we go to register blade of that Laravel UI, for example, there is a type text for the name, but there's type email for the email. So do you use type email for emails or do you still do input type text or just general input? And speaking of types, totally off topic, but while preparing for this video, I learned that if you do type color, and let's refresh, we have a color picker, which works by default in browser. And as a result of that, you get RGB code as input value. It works differently in Chrome, Firefox, and Safari I've tested. So implemented a bit differently, that color picker is in a different place, but it still works. So that's cool, right? Okay, now back to the main topic. Let's roll back. So input type email is one example, but also another popular example is type number. So we'll just play around and refresh the page. And now it's a number field, which you can increase or decrease and possibly even specify a minimum of one, for example, maximum of five. Let's do it and refresh. And if we try to go one, two, three, four, five, it doesn't go higher than five. Or you can even specify steps. For example, if you want to play with price, step could be 001 and then see what it's happening if I move up and down. So there are a lot of attributes related to input type. Next, see how many attributes are additionally added to the inputs in Laravel UI, for example. So required, autocomplete and autofocus. So autofocus will mean that the cursor will jump immediately to the first field. So saving the user additional click or tab and then autocomplete name, it will try to autocomplete your name from your browser settings. There also can be a helper like placeholder. Example, John, something like this. Refresh, example, John. So people would understand, is it a name? Is it a first name? Is it a surname? Is it a full name? Is it some kind of nickname? So examples with placeholders are really powerful as well. Regarding required, I have a few comments. So if you put that here in the input, refresh the page, don't feel anything, and this comes from the browser, this is cool. But there are a few things we can improve here. So first, asterisk. So that should come with an asterisk here, like this. So people would see visually, and people are used to those signs, that this field is required or if all fields are required, then you should put that on top. For example, register and then go something like all fields required. Let's try how it would look, something like this. Or if there is majority of fields required, but some of them are optional, you can put something like email optional specifically or underneath that field somewhere. So people would know what is required and what is optional. And of course, don't forget to put backend validation on Laravel. We will get to that in a few minutes. Final few examples of attributes of HTML. For example, you can specify max length. So five characters, for example, is just an example. So we refresh and if we type in five characters, it's not allowing to type in more. Of course, it's a front end validation from the browser and it should be supported also from the backend. And maybe it also then makes sense to specify how many characters are left with JavaScript or Laravel Livewire with live validation. But you can use that just from HTML input attribute. 
And finally, if some field is disabled for editing, but you still want to show that, just put in disabled like this. So it would visually show that you cannot edit that, but the value could be possible. So you can copy the value. Let's actually try it. Value like this, for example, you can copy that value and paste somewhere else, but you are not able to edit that. So all those visual attributes, they are really important. It's kind of small detail, but it improves the user experience of any form quite a lot. Okay, enough about HTML and let's get back to our own beloved Laravel. And let's see how those Laravel UI and Laravel Breeze shows the errors differently. So it's your choice where to show that. So in Laravel UI case, there is no error message anything above the form, but instead there is an error blade command. So whatever comes from the backend after the validation, after default request validate, I think it is, this error blade command just shows the invalid message like this. So under the input field, but also it's reusing that at error in a different way, in a different place. So also adding a CSS class is invalid if there is an error with such field name. I think it's pretty smart. If we take a look at Laravel Breeze and register form, and if we open the blade of Laravel Breeze, I've opened that in Sublime, the validation errors are above the form on top like this as a separate component. And you would think it's not a good UX because those errors are not here for every field and there is no separate CSS class, but then you have an advantage of reusable component. So there's X auth validation errors, which is in resources views component auth validation errors, which is for each of all the errors. And you can use that validation errors component in other forms. So just copy here and paste anywhere else and you can reuse that. So this is an approach of Laravel Breeze. Another tip, don't forget old values. It seems like a very old and well-known topic, but while doing junior code reviews on this channel, I've seen quite a few places where people don't put anything like this. So value old name means that if the validation error happens, the session will contain for one page for one time, the values from old inputs with the same name. So name, name, name. I will show you what happens if you don't put it. So let's refresh the page and do some validation error. See that name disappeared. So people need to enter the same value for the second time and please don't make them do that. Let them work on the actual fields with errors, but don't make them type twice. Now let's talk about how you can customize the texts of the messages. So the password confirmation does not match. It comes from default framework and that's okay, but if you want to make it more human friendly, something like password don't match or something like that, there's a file called resources lang en validation PHP or whatever language you're using. And for every validation rule, there's a default text. So in this case, we have a confirmed and the message is the attribute, which is in our case password. The password confirmation does not match. So we can edit that to something like the attribute and attribute confirmation fields should be the same. Not actually sure if it's more human, but just as an example of what you can customize. So let's do it something like this and we can customize it like this. But if you want more customization, not just for general rule in the same file, resources lang en validation at the bottom, there are two more arrays, custom, which means that you can specify, for example, password, rule confirm, confirm and custom message is passwords do not match. Something like this, or it should be confirmed from what I remember, not confirm. Let's try it out again. Let's fill in the form with fake filler Chrome extension and type in wrong password. So passwords do not match. So you can customize it per field and per field per rule. And also you can change just the attribute names here attributes. So for example, for every form, the attribute password should be called your password, for example like this. And then let's delete that customization for now and refresh. And let's make the same error, your password. So now it doesn't look very human, the whole text, but just as an example that you can change that attribute to the name, whatever you specify in this attributes array. So by doing this, you can combine that into more human friendly error messages. Now let's deal with the biggest horror for users. If they see something like this, you fill in the form, you click something and you get something like this server error or whoops, something went wrong without any explanation of what happened, what you did wrong, how to fix it, any contact details, nothing. 
So there are at least a few things that we can do here. First, we can customize that error page for any 500 errors. In the Laravel documentation, there's a section called custom HTTP error pages, and you can do something like this artisan command to publish all the error pages, and they are in resources, views, errors, and then you can customize that 500 blade to server error, for example, please contact email in for Laravel daily com, for example. So if we try it now, then you have this. So at least they have someone to contact. So that's the least that we can do. Or you can specify that as a totally customized error page with more details of what happened. And you can get creative here or your copywriters could get creative. This is an example on my Twitter. I've received a message from Buffer to schedule the tweets and look at the text. Something's gone wrong. I've notified my human creators who will look into this. I'm pretty sure it's 500 error or some kind of validation, but it feels human, the text. You kind of feel for that robot or that Laravel system or whatever is on the back end that they failed their mission and you know that there are humans on the other side that were notified. So get creative with error messages. So that's it for this video. There are a few topics that are left out intentionally because this video becomes too long and I'm trying to stick to shorter format of like 10 minutes or so. So in other lessons in the future, I will talk about try catch, exceptions and errors, and also how to write tests. So the validation would fire and you would test that the form request class or validation works without you testing every field to be required or not required and whether the validation works in general. So if you want to get to those lessons in the future, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified of new videos, and support the channel financially by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen from myself and my team, my quick admin panel Laravel generator, my courses, which is like 16 courses at the moment, and my live wire kit set of components. See you guys in other videos.